Matthew chapters 4 to 6. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. When he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was hungry afterward. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of God's mouth. Then the devil took him into the holy city. He set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you don't dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, You shall not test the Lord, your God. Again, the devil took him to an exceedingly high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. He said to him, I will give you all of these things, if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Get behind me, Satan. For it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and you shall serve him only. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and served him. Now when Jesus heard that John was delivered up, he withdrew into Galilee. Leaving Nazareth, he came and lived in Capernaum, which is by the sea, in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken through Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, toward the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness saw a great light, to those who sat in the region and shadow of death, to them light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. He said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers for men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, in the boat with Zebedee their father, mending their nets. He called them. They immediately left the boat and their father, and followed him. Jesus went about in all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every sickness among the people. The report about him went out into all Syria. They brought to him all who were sick, afflicted with various diseases and torments, possessed with demons, epileptics, and paralytics, and he healed them. Great multitudes from Galilee, Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and from beyond the Jordan followed him. Seeing the multitudes, he went up onto the mountain. When he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people reproach you, persecute you, and say all kinds of evil against you falsely, for my sake. Rejoice, and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For that is how they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its flavor, with what will it be salted? It is then good for nothing, but to be cast out and trodden under the feet of men. You are the light of the world. A city located on a hill can't be hidden. Neither do you light a lamp and put it under a measuring basket, but on a stand, and it shines to all who are in the house. Even so, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. 
Don't think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I didn't come to destroy, but to fulfill. For most certainly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not even one smallest letter or one tiny pen stroke shall in any way pass away from the law until all things are accomplished. Therefore, whoever shall break one of these least commandments and teach others to do so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven, but whoever shall do and teach them shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, there is no way you will enter into the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to the ancient ones, You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. But I tell you that everyone who is angry with his brother without a cause will be in danger of the judgment. Whoever says to his brother, Raka, will be in danger of the council. Whoever says, You fool, will be in danger of the fire of Gehenna. If therefore you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there before the altar, and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Agree with your adversary quickly while you are with him on the way, lest perhaps the prosecutor deliver you to the judge, and the judge deliver you to the officer, and you be cast into prison. Most certainly, I tell you, you shall by no means get out of there until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery, but I tell you that everyone who gazes at a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. If your right eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out and throw it away from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members should perish than for your whole body to be cast into Gehenna. If your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members should perish than for your whole body to be cast into Gehenna. It was also said, whoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorce. But I tell you that whoever puts away his wife, except for the cause of sexual immorality, makes her an adulteress. And whoever marries her when she is put away commits adultery. Again you have heard that it was said to the ancient ones, you shall not make false vows, but shall perform to the Lord your vows. But I tell you, don't swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is the throne of God, nor by the earth, for it is the footstool of his feet, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither shall you swear by your head, for you can't make one hair white or black. But let your yes be yes, and your no be no, whatever is more than these is of the evil one. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, don't resist him who is evil, but whoever strikes you on your right cheek, turn to him the other also. If anyone sues you to take away your coat, let him have your cloak also. Whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks you, and don't turn away him who desires to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who mistreat you and persecute you, that you may be children of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Don't even the tax collectors do the same? If you only greet your friends, what more do you do than others? Don't even the tax collectors do the same? Therefore you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Be careful that you don't do your charitable giving before men. To be seen by them or else you have no reward from your father who is in heaven therefore when you do merciful deeds don't sound a trumpet before yourself as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may get glory from men most certainly i tell you they have received their reward but when you do merciful deeds don't let your left hand know what your right hand does, so that your merciful deeds may be in secret, then your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. When you pray, you shall not be as the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Most certainly, I tell you, they have received their reward. 
But you, when you pray, enter into your inner room, and having shut your door, pray to your father who is in secret, and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. In praying, don't use vain repetitions as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their much speaking. Therefore don't be like them, for your father knows what things you need before you ask him. Pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also forgive our debtors. Bring us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you don't forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Moreover, when you fast, don't be like the hypocrites, with sad faces. For they disfigure their faces that they may be seen by men to be fasting. Most certainly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that you are not seen by men to be fasting, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. Don't lay up treasures for yourselves on the earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consume, and where thieves don't break through and steal, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is sound, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is evil, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is the darkness! No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You can't serve both God and mammon. Therefore I tell you, don't be anxious for your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, nor yet for your body, what you will wear. Isn't life more than food, and the body more than clothing? See the birds of the sky, that they don't sow, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you of much more value than they? Which of you, by being anxious, can add one moment to his lifespan? Why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They don't toil, neither do they spin, yet I tell you that even Solomon in all his glory was not dressed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today exists and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, won't he much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore don't be anxious, saying, What will we eat, what will we drink, or, with what will we be clothed? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore don't be anxious for tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Each day's own evil is sufficient. It's time to put on your thinking cap. Ready, set, quiz. Question 1. What happened to Jesus after he was baptized? A. He began preaching in Galilee. B. He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. C. He chose his twelve disciples. D. He performed his first miracle. Now it's time to think. Correct answer, B, Matthew 4 verse 1. Question 2. How long did Jesus fast in the wilderness? A, 40 days and 40 nights. B, 7 days. C, 12 days. D, 30 days. Now it's time to think. Correct answer, A, Matthew 4 verse 2. Question 3. What was the first temptation of Jesus by the devil in the wilderness? A. To turn stones into bread. B. To throw himself down from the temple. 
C. To worship the devil. D. To command the animals. Now it's time to think. Correct answer. A. Matthew 4 verse 3. Question 4. Which prophet did Jesus quote when he resisted the devil's first temptation? A. Isaiah. B. Jeremiah. C. Ezekiel. D. Moses. Now it's time to think. Correct answer. D. Matthew 4 verse 4. Question 5. From where did Jesus begin his public ministry after leaving Nazareth? A. Jerusalem. B. Bethlehem. C. Capernaum. D. Bethany. Now it's time to think. Correct answer. C. Matthew 4 verse 13. Question 6. What was Jesus' primary message when he began to preach? A. Believe in the gospel. B. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. C. Love one another. D. Follow me. Now it's time to think. Correct answer. B. Matthew 4 verse 17. Question 7. Who were the first two disciples Jesus called by the Sea of Galilee? A. James and John B. Peter and Andrew C. Matthew and Thomas D. Philip and Bartholomew Now it's time to think. Correct answer B. Matthew 4 verse 18 Question 8 What does Jesus teach about making oaths? A. Swear by heaven. B. Swear by the earth. C. Swear by your head. D. Do not swear at all. Now it's time to think. Correct answer. D. Matthew 5 verse 34. Question 9. What does Jesus say about those who are persecuted for righteousness sake? A. They will be condemned. B. They will be forgotten. C. They will receive mercy. D. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now it's time to think. Correct answer. D. Matthew 5 verse 10. Question 10. What metaphor does Jesus use to describe his followers' effect on the world? A. Salt of the earth. B. Light of the world. C. Both A and B. D. Bread of life. Now it's time to think. Correct answer. C. Matthew 5 verses 13 to 14. Question 11. According to Jesus, what should you do if your right eye causes you to stumble? A. Close it. B. Pluck it out. C. Wash it. D. Cover it. Now it's time to think. Correct answer. B. Matthew 5 verse 29. Question 12. What does Jesus recommend doing in secret to avoid hypocrisy? A. Fasting. B. Praying. C. Giving to the needy. D. All of the above. Now it's time to think. Correct answer. D. Matthew 6 verses 1 to 18. Question 13. How does Jesus instruct us to pray? A. With many words. B. With loud voices. C. In public to be seen by others. D. In secret. Now it's time to think. Correct answer. D. Matthew 6 verse 6. Question 14. What does Jesus say about worrying about tomorrow? A. Tomorrow will worry for itself. B. 
Plan carefully for tomorrow. C. Tomorrow may never come. D. Keep tomorrow in your prayers. Now it's time to think. Correct answer. A. Matthew 6 verse 34. Question 15. What does Jesus say is more important than food and clothing? A. Money. B. Family. C. Seeking God's kingdom and his righteousness. D. Good health. Now it's time to think. Correct answer. See Matthew 6 verse 33. I hope you found these 15 multiple choice questions both challenging and enlightening. Whether you nailed every question or discovered new areas to explore further, remember that each step in this journey deepens our connection with the word. If you enjoyed this quiz and learned something new today, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel for more Bible studies and quizzes like this. Sharing this video with friends and family not only spreads the knowledge, but also encourages others in their spiritual growth. Let's continue to learn and grow in faith together. Thank you for participating, and don't forget to like and share this video. Your support means the world, and it helps us to keep producing content that enriches and inspires. See you in the next video, and until then, Keep exploring the Bible and letting its truths transform your life.